Hey guys, it's Jay. Welcome back to the channel. So guys, I'm going to take another look at the Centurion's action figure line. And we have the second figure in the line this time. We are going to be looking at Jake Rockwell. That's right guys, the land operations specialist. I want to give a huge shout out to my friend Sean for lending me these once again. My brother, this has been an absolute pleasure and thank you again for letting me look at these. It's been so great reliving this 35 years later. I can't believe it. Such wonderful examples of these toys. Without further ado, guys, let's dive in and take a look at Jake Rockwell. So, guys, we are going to continue our series of the Centurions from Kenner. Guys, I got to tell you, this is still, to this day, one of my absolute all-time favorite toy lines. The gimmick itself was just so great. Three different specialized soldiers, one from the air, one from the sea, one from the ground, and they could have interchangeable parts even with each other. So yeah, this particular toy line really captured my imagination as a kid. My favorite was, of course, Max Ray, but my second favorite was definitely Jake Rockwell here. Land specialist here, I really can't get enough of this guy. He had all the heavy armaments, you know, he had a, he had a, a Gatling gun, he had an actual bazooka, he had... I'm not exactly sure what this is. I think it's supposed to be a floodlight or something like that. And he had what was a uh, side-mounted um, arm cannon, which this particular version does not have it. But still, he was armed to the teeth and ready for battle. So, guys, without further ado, let's take a deep dive and take a look at Jake Rockwell, Land Operation Specialist, and his weapon system, Fire Force. I can't believe how well-preserved these boxes are. Uh, sure, the cell phone has been, uh, you know pretty much melted away. The glue is already uh, completely off. But there's still a piece of the blue background right here, uh, which held together, you know, the, the actual backing card in Freaking Credible. Man, $5 on clearance. I can't believe it. There are several other stickers in here which I can't see and I don't want to peel off. But it's amazing to think that inflation these days, I mean, like an average figure this size would actually be something like, you know, $40, $50 today. Yeah, man, absolutely incredible. So great to actually have this example and take a look at it. Wow. So yeah, this, <laughs> obviously, uh, you know, we look here and the U.S. price for this was uh, $5 at the time of the discount sale. And this was discounted all the way down from $9. And we can see a secondary label on there. So it was probably closer to $15, I would imagine, anyway. Guys, that was an absolutely insane, uh, you know, price for an action figure back then. But we got to remember that these guys are not, you know, three and three quarter inch figures. They were much bigger. These guys are closer to, uh, you know, seven inch, maybe even nine inch figures. Um, and honestly, I love them. They really were just amazing action figures to get into. Let's take a look at the packaging. So here we are. Obviously, we see the branding for Centurions, Power Extreme, Jake Rockwell, Land Operation Specialist, and Fire Force Assault Weapon System. Beautiful. We can see down here that we definitely have Jake running into battle, uh, you know, jumping over some barbed wire fencing. Uh, he's, for whatever reason, his bazooka is uh, attached to his actual forearm. We can see his Gatling gun just, like, firing multiple shots, and the bazooka is actually fired all the way out into the desert. God knows who he's actually fighting, but seriously, it looks like he's in a huge firefight. We see explosions everywhere. We see some rapid fire coming across the ground. Seriously, Jake is has ha, has absolutely no fear. He really is the hero of the day. Absolutely insane. Let's take a look at the next side. And it's kind of hard to see with the uh, with the ring light. My apologies, but we can see here that Jake is, of course, once again the land operations expert, fire force assault weapon system. This is mode one, which is surveillance. It's your standard mode, pretty much everything that we that we come to, uh, to come to know with Jake. But his backpack is now attached to the front of his um of his chest. The bazooka is literally uh, the only thing on his back, and for whatever reason, they've mounted both the floodlight and his sidearm on top of his two shoulders. Interesting. Very, very interesting in terms of that uh, that overall schema. Now, the mode four, ready for alert. Jake prepares for battle. This one actually is uh, more akin to his overall configuration. As we can see here, it's his sidearm is actually now on his shoulder. The bazooka is actually mounted to the backpack. And for whatever reason, uh, the floodlight is actually also attached to the backpack. Very cool. Let's take a look at the back. There we go, guys. This is Jake Rockwell, Land Operations Specialist. Specialty is Land Operations Profile. The world's expert in ground maneuvers. Jake is a member of the most formidable fighting force, Centurions. <laughs> Seriously? Who writes these things? Who writes these things? Oh my gosh. 
In his first attempt, shattered all speed records and endurance records in the Intercontinental Cross Country Race. What? <laughs> he drives turbo crash cars in demolition derbies on weekends. His specialty is brute force, and he's smart and streetwise in, sen in a sense. Oh my god, just crazy. <laughs> just that wow factor. Just that absolute wow factor for kids. In freaking sane. Assault Weapon Systems, Helmet, Power Pack, Twin Laser Cannons, Radar Sensor, Plasma Accelerator, Plasma Repulsor. Yes, indeed, we do see Jake Rockwell, Land Operation Specialist, Mode 8, Frontal Attack. Jake leads the attack. This is pretty much his entire um, weapon system, but all forward-facing. So the backpack is still, uh, you know, behind him. The this Apparently, it's a radar dome uh, is on his, is on his uh, shoulder. His bazooka is on the other shoulder, and his sidearm, which is usually on his arm, is actually now in the front, along with his Gatling gun. Kind of a weird configuration, but again, this was the whole point of the uh, the play feature. You can mix and match any which way you wanted. It was absolutely amazing. Guys, without further ado, seriously, let's have a look at this incredible action figure nearly 35 years later. Let's have a look at Jake Rockwell. And here he is, everybody, Jake Rockwell. Land Operations Specialist, and his Assault Weapon System, Fire Force. Guys, this is absolutely one of my favorite Centurions, second only to Max Ray. Let's have a closer look at him. As we can see here, Jake comes with his Assault Weapon System, Fire Force. Holy crap, check out the detail that's involved in this. It really is absolutely stunning. Um, you know, Jake here, he is a, more of a rough-and-tumble type of feel. We can see that with uh, the, the type of armaments that he's got. His clothing is even kind of... Yeah, yeah, if I will, a little bit more rugged looking. It's not exactly uh, form-fitting like it was on Max. Max is, obviously, because he's more streamlined, has to go into the water. Uh, Jake's Jake's actual um, attire is actually a little bit more loose-fitting so that he can run around and, uh, you know, really get right into the dirt. It's absolutely amazing. I love the sculpture on, the sculpting on all of the uh, the actual design of Jake here. He looks absolutely ridiculous. Oh my gosh. The yellow motif is very interesting it's almost as if uh you know he's in the he's fitted out for desert warfare but the green taupe uh type of overalls they really do add that extra little bit of flair which really does help to identify jake as a ground assault specialist we can see here the the feet are actually quite unique they have this pattern uh and you know what i'm not exactly sure where it's indicative of but i do like the way uh it almost feels as if they're like sandals really <laughs> Yeah, almost if he's digging digging down deep. They also kind of remind me of tank treads. Um, you know, if if if, uh, if you follow me, uh, see the pattern here. They're actually like a cross hatch pattern. I really do appreciate that. They really look so amazing, guys. This is a wonderful uh, you know throwback to a toy line which really did not get enough love. And even though it had a cartoon to support it, unfortunately, it really did kind of go into obscurity after so many years. All right, guys, let's examine Jake's first weapon system, which comes included with the figure. This is, of course, Fire Force. First thing we're going to take a look at is the Gatling gun. This attaches normally to Jake's chest. It really is a wonderful example of, you know, a, a kind of simple technique in order to, you know, just spark imagination. We don't see any full metal jacket along with uh, the Gatling gun itself, but as we have seen in the show... Apparently, all the magazines are, are are embedded within the actual frame itself. As the uh, as the turret rotates, it fires off you know multitudes of rounds uh, uh, to the enemy, and it really does look absolutely stunning. I do love the uh, the overall design itself. It really is indicative of, of a uh, a sort of tank like motif. I love the actual gearing system here. It, it looks as if it's functional all the, all throughout, and of course, uh, the 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 wonderful sculpt. It really does is indicative of a futuristic type of weapon while still feeling very rooted in today's uh, type of military warfare. Honestly, this is absolutely stunning. The next piece in the system is the Ray Dome. I didn't even know that this was actually radar. I always thought it was some sort of, um, well, you know, uh, flashlight or some sort of additional laser armament. But yeah, it's it's clear to me now, uh, having read what it actually is supposed to be on the box, yes, this is definitely some sort of radar detection system. We can see the antenna right here, uh, the actual uh, uh, molded section here, which I believe is probably just uh, the detector. And 
it actually does have a pivot feature up and down. Very simple uh, design, but it works so well. On the other side, it is just the uh, the back of the actual uh, radar detection system uh, itself. And of course, the Y bar, very, very indicative of something which we would attach uh, either to a backpack or in this case, Jake's shoulder. Gorgeous. We do have to talk about the communication array that Jake carries on his back. It is a wonderful device which allows him to communicate directly with headquarters as well as set up a direct terminal communication uh, and site-to-site uh, communications for other team members of the Centurions. This is the antenna, which in the show, it actually, I believe it does, it did actually telescope, but here, obviously, that's uh, that's something more of a, a hassle than it is uh, a feature. We also see the turning gear here, which is one of the main gimmicks uh, for Jake, as similar to the way we saw it working with uh, Max. We can probably see it turning right here. There it goes. It's kind of hard to see at this level. There we go. We got it. Yep, this will, this will activate, actually activate um, the firing mechanism, which we can show a little uh, showcase a little bit later. I really do like the, I really do appreciate the fact that they actually have these wonderful details on the back of the unit itself. Things which you will never really see once it's attached to Jake. I really do appreciate the simplicity of this overall design. Yet it still looks super futuristic and really does spark the imagination for many children. The most popular piece of Jake in his. Uh, Included weapon system is, of course, his bazooka. Holy crap. This thing, uh, honestly, I have a love-hate relationship with this thing. It is definitely one of the heaviest armaments uh, on, on, on any of the Centurions. It's just absolutely gigantic. I do love the way it's sculpted. It really does have that uh, futuristic look. But again, at the same time, still has rooted in uh, a very militaristic uh, type of weapon. The thing about this is it's on a hairpin trigger. And when I mean a hairpin trigger, I seriously mean a hairpin trigger. Once it's loaded, uh, and getting it to load is actually uh, uh, a chore in and of itself. But honestly, just the slightest touch, and it will fire instantly. Sorry, guys, that, that, <laughs> I, uh, it, and, and it hurts. I'm not even, I'm not even kidding. It actually, actually hurts. Um, let me try and demonstrate just how difficult it is to get this thing loaded. I'm not sure if we're going to make it in time. So here we go. We're gonna try. We we have to load it in a very specific manner, and once it's in place, let's just say, as you can see, it can be very difficult to actually load this thing. What you got to do is you got to hold it and then see how I had to click back the actual trigger. That's the only way to get this thing properly loaded. And then once it's loaded, literally hairpin trigger, and there you go. <laughs> Incredible. The last accessory, of course, is the most iconic. It is, of course, Jake's helmet. This is, yeah, it's just absolutely so iconic in the, in the cartoon as well as, of course, on the toy. The insignia for the Centurions is right there on the top. Honestly, these particular examples are so well-preserved. I do have to applaud whoever did own this toy when they were a kid. They took really good care of it. We can see that there is no glass on the front. Uh, the front portion of the helmet is, of course, a breathing apparatus which filters out uh, many toxins as well as any chemical warfare. Excellent stuff for Jake. And it does actually have a half and half, uh, you know, type of color scheme, which is very unique to uh, to Jake himself. I don't believe any of the other trend, uh, the other Centurions actually have this feature. Uh, and there's actually not that much wear on this particular example. There, You can see a little bit of thinning if you look very, very carefully on the backside of the helmet. But other than that, it's actually really, 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 really well, well preserved, uh, uh, all things considered. I love the etching uh, and the, the actual ribbing details here uh, along the side, as well as the overall vent in, in the front. On the other side, we can see the helmet is very, very well sculpted once again. Um, and unlike, unlike Max, there is no rubbing of the hair uh, details and paint. Very, very cool. All right, guys, let's have a look at Jake himself. Well, guys, here he is. This is Jake Rockwell. Yeah, he definitely is one of those rough and tumble types. I love the uh, military style haircut. <laughs> he definitely likes to keep it short. Wonderful, wonderful uh, example of someone who grew up, uh, you know, playing, playing, playing in the playing in the ground. And uh, yeah, he was probably very much into this, into, into playing with sandbox and 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 you know, uh, Tonka toys and things like that. I do love the way he he's overall designed. The suit itself is wonderfully put together. I, I've, I um, have always been a fan of Centurions and the fact that, you know what, their weapon systems could plug directly into their suits. 
These exosuits are wonderfully designed. Seriously, I do love the and, e, and it should be mentioned that each and every Centurion actually has different designs for all of their exosuits. If you look very carefully, there are certain particular design elements that are only available on Jake, similar to the way Max has been th designed, and finally the way Ace has been designed. It's very, very unique and very, very interesting. Jake here, of course, like I said, has a uh, taupe green jumper, and again, it's fitted for desert warfare. Love the way he's love the way it's all situated. The sculpting is very, very well done, especially when we consider that this is literally a 35 year old toy. My goodness. All of the uh, sockets are actually well preserved on Jake, unlike Max, who actually had uh, some actual small issues on some of the peg holes. Jake seems to be have been well preserved in that regard. Excellent. Whoever owned this uh, prior to uh, to, this, to selling the property, I have to say they kept very very good care of Jake himself. We can see here that Jake, his facial sculpt, honestly, it's actually really well done. One of the best things about all of these uh, Centurion's characters is their overall facial design is actually very indicative of, you know, the type of people and uh, military figures who were recognizable at the time. He has these striking green eyes, which really sets him apart from the other Centurion's in the line. His brown hair, again, very indicative of a... Sort of, you know, I guess it would be either a Texan or Nebraskan type of, uh, you know, rough and tumble individual. So, yeah, really, really appreciate this. His head does tilt forward and does tilt slightly back. The neck is on a pivot, and I don't want to do, go around too much, as we've already talked about. These are very, very delicate toys. The arms do move uh, up and down. Again, I don't want to stress them out too much. They do have a 90-degree pivot on the elbow 90 degree pivot on the knee, no articulation on the legs. This is a very, very <laughs> basic toy and no articulation on the wrists. There is no waist swivel as that would interfere with the actual, uh, you know, gimmick that actually has um, a pass through on the inner portion of the center plug. And we'll get to that in a moment. All right, guys, let's get Jake assembled with Fire Force. Crystal, this is Jake. Beam down, Fire Force. Power Extreme! Three, 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 three. And there we have it, guys. That is Jake Rockwell with Fire Force. <laughs> we are missing one last attachment on this side. It is his sidearm cannon. Unfortunately, uh, you know, that was lost many years ago, and... Uh, in fact, I actually had to find this, uh, you know, Gatling gun as part of my own collection, as well as the uh, Ray Dome, uh, because most of the pieces of Jake here were just missing. It really is incredible to actually see this toy. Almost 35 years later, he is absolutely well-preserved. And you know what? Bravo to, to everyone, uh, you know, the, the original owners. And of course, Sean. Thank you again, Sean, for letting me review this. This is an absolute pleasure. The only thing left to do is to uh, take a look at his action feature. All right, guys. So for Jake's action feature, it's very, very similar to uh, the way Max's work. So what we do is we actually take the bazooka, detach it from the top portion of the backpack. The actual activation gear is right here, which is that attached to the actual uh, firing lever. And once you attach it to this green peg here, which is the activation gear, it will start to rotate once you rotate the Gatling gun. And we can see that it'll actually <laughs> fire off the bazooka. Pretty spectacular, actually. All right. So now all we have to do is rotate the Gatling gun. And we should see, um, <laughs> at least we hope, that we'll see the bazooka fire. So here we go. <laughs> First time. I'm... <laughs> that always gets me every single time. That is hilarious. I can't believe that actually worked the very first time. That was crazy. Let's try that again. So we'll try it one more time. Let's see if it actually fires again. So we just hold it. We just hold the unit steady. <laughs> and then just try to rotate it. And like I said, it's on a hairpin trigger, so this doesn't take much effort. Let's see if it'll fire again for us. And there she goes. <laughs> Absolutely crazy. Holy crap. Still working. 
35 years later. Incredible. Well, guys, that was our look at Jake Rockwell, Land Operations Specialist, along with his weapon system, Fire Force. Honestly, he is my second favorite Centurion of all time. My first, obviously, being Max Ray. But seriously, Jake comes a very, very close second. <laughs> guys, what an incredible look at Jake Rockwell, the Land Operations Specialist for the Centurion's toy line. Wow, just crazy. Fire Force is a wonderful, uh, you know, pack-in. It really does have one of the most heaviest armaments in the uh, Centurion's line, rivaled only by Sky Knight. And honestly, looking at Jake so many years later, doesn't he look absolutely incredible? Seriously, for his age. 35 years old, this figure. Now, of course, they are notoriously fragile. Uh, you really want to be careful about these joints. Do not manipulate them too far. Only as far as you want, as you, as you are able to. Once you feel that it's going to be stressed too much, definitely stop. Uh, there are way too many examples out there of these figures just breaking, like, in, in the most unfortunate ways, and you really don't want to be crying. These figures are no longer cheap. These are, I think, the uh, a complete example is upwards of $100. It's crazy. But guys, I hope you enjoyed this look back at the Centurion's toy line. Man, what a vintage, what a wonderful vintage collection. If you enjoyed this episode, guys, please let me know so I can, uh, you know, consider doing more of these. I really do want to uh, try and get, uh, you know... Uh, toys from my childhood and see if people are interested in, in, in taking a look at them so many years later. Guys, if you enjoyed this episode, please do leave a like. It really does help me out. Hope you're all doing well. Staying safe. And as always, everybody, thank you very much for watching. <laughs> Power Extreme, everybody! Power Extreme! Be proud, everybody. Take care. I want to give a huge shout out to all my Patreon and channel member supporters. Thank you so much for your support, guys. It really means a lot and really helps the channel to keep growing.